Welcome back, welcome back. We get to use an old result in this one. Um, the statement reads, A. Equation 12.40 defines proper velocity in terms of the ordinary velocity. Invert that equation to get the ordinary velocity u in terms of the proper velocity eta. Part B. What is the relationship between proper velocity and rapidity for equation 12.34? Assume that the velocity along the x-axis and find eta as a function of theta. Now, what we need to know is the proper velocity and the rapidity. Again, proper velocity defined in terms of the ordinary velocity. And this is the rapidity that we found a couple questions ago. Uh, nice to see it coming back up. But again, we still see this kind of factor v over c popping up everywhere in this theory. And that's for new. Uh, that's we can't forget that it's for a good reason let's see how this works out though all right so for a we want to invert this thing that's pretty easy to do kind of we just got to be careful so first things first again solve for uh u isolate that get eta or get that square root over to the eta side square both sides isolate down the u out of everything Notice that when we uh, square both sides, we have to distribute the eta, u squared, get all the u terms over to the right-hand side, factor everything out. So now it's eta over c squared instead of u over c squared, and then divide over. So as you see, a pretty quick and easy problem as far as inverting it. But the same thing happened when we were talking about how to transform the, uh, how to do the inverse transforms, where we switch the uh, quantities and change the sign on it. And this is why. Algebraically, we're just undoing and then reformulating the same kind of structural formulation. So that's what we mean by inversing it. Um, clearly, u is in the same form that we expect, so not that bad of a deal. Uh, where this comes in with respect to rapidity, though, is that now we know that since we have the hyperbolic tangent of a u over c, we can plug that u over c into something. So solve this for tangent and we get tangent theta is equal to u over c. But we know that um, we have a one, uh, and then divide that by the square root of one minus u uh, over c, and both terms are squared, so I can write that as one big square. And if I do that, I get that, oh, that's a typo. That should be a, tan, a hyperbolic tangent squared because of the u over c, that whole thing is squared. So this should be a square. And then 1 minus the hyperbolic tangent squared gives us the secant squared in that square root. Then we're just left with 1 over secant, which is how we get to the cosine or the hyperbolic cosine. Um, so that should be a square. And then everything else is just a simplification from there. But what we see, if that's the case, then this cosh is really easy to deal with. And we see that um, we need to now be careful with that because we're showing that eta is equal to 1 over the square root, and that goes to the cosh. But we also saw that uh, this u here, this purple, if we solve this thing, that's tangent theta is equal to u over c, so multiply the c over. And that's where we get the c tangent, uh, hyperbolic tangent. And of course, we know that hyperbolic tangent is the hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine. So this cancels with the uh, denominator within the reciprocal identity. And we're just left with the hyperbolic sign and, uh, of course, the multiple of C. So that's pretty darn cool. And we love to see how the things from hyperbolic uh, world and the sines and cosines come through yet again. This is a concept that actually gets played a lot, played on a lot. So it's worth kind of seeing, although it's not at all obvious that this would work out so nice. Uh, but that being said, we'll see you at the next one.